these two techniques, amperometry and voltmetry, are something we call small a per v technique. A is area, V is volume. What does it mean by that? If we consider the electrochemical cell in amperometry and voltmetry, we use the, elect the small electrode size. Uh, the millimeter or centimeter scale of the electrode is considered small. We, we use the small electrode size compared to the large solution volume. V is volume, right? The amperometry and voltmetry is small a per v technique because we use small electrode size compared to the large solution volume. And what does it mean by that? It means that uh, even we perform the electrolysis by applying the waveform, your uh, surface concentration is only where it's only the location that something changed by the small a per v technique. We can assume that the outer solution, the bulk solution, maintain the same uh, composition. Even we generate some oxidation or some reduction, the bulk concentration is going to be the same. This is why sometimes we call this technique to be microelectrolysis. We, 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 we are familiar with electrolysis, like, but now we have the word micro. Yeah. So amperometry and voltmetry is microelectrolysis, which utilize small a per v condition. So in these techniques, we apply the potential waveform, and we're gonna see what is the potential waveform later. We're gonna apply some potential or potential waveform, and we're gonna uh, generate the oxidation or reduction of the species, and we measure the current from this oxidation or reduction, and relate back to the concentration of the analyte. But now, since we have both oxidation and reduction in uh, in the possibility. Sometimes we have to distinguish those because some species can undergo both oxidation and reduction. So IUPAC, IUPAC uh, defined the sign for the current in 2019. So if you go back and read the older textbook, or even you take the course from the older professor, sometimes they will use the different convention but in this class i'm gonna use the uh, latest convention from the iupac which indicates that if it is the anodic current it will we will use the positive sign if it is positive current then it is positive sign and it is anodic current in contrast if it's cathodic current from reduction then we will use negative sign Again, if it is anodic current from oxidation, then we will use positive sign. If it's cathodic current from reduction, then we will use the negative sign. For example, we may say, okay, we measure something like 10, 10 uh, milliamp. So if it's plus 10 milliamp, then we, know, we kind of know that it is oxidation. In contrast, if we read something like, yeah, we, we detect minus five microamp, so it is minus, right? So it is negative. So it is a uh, reduction, something like that. We, we define the side to make it less confusing. So now we're going to talk about the first technique, which is amperometry. Amperometry applies the constant potential to oxidize or reduce electroactive analyte. So you can see the first diagram here is the potential waveform or sometimes we use the word excitation signal or sometimes we use the word excitation signal which is the plot between the potential that we apply against the time and since the amperometry is constant potential so this line is going to be constant it's flat basically because we apply the constant potential over time you need to be able to draw this i'm just going to tell you right now so amperometry it's constant potential, so the E versus T is uh, basically constant. What's going to happen after we apply the constant potential? If our potential is positive enough to drive the oxidation or negative enough to drive the reduction, then we're going to get the Faraday current from the oxidation or reduction, right? And we can plot the current that we can detect from the working electrode versus time. In general, the amperometry current will give you something like this. The current falls over time. 
this diagram between the current and time we call it amperogram or sometimes we call it chrono amperogram chrono basically means time right so ampero is current so chrono amperogram is uh, i versus v uh, i versus t uh, current over time what does the magnitude of the current tells us we already discussed that the current reflects the, the rate of electrode reaction so higher current means higher rate of reaction lower current means lower rate of reaction and we can say we can see now that the current falls it means that if time passes then your electrode reaction is lower and by this condition it means that only the species at the electrode can be reduced or oxidized if your species is far from the electrode then it cannot see the potential so no reduction or oxidation occur the species has to be at the electrode surface in order to get the reduction or oxidation only that so we're gonna explain in details on the shape of the amperogram and sometimes we use something called concentration profile which is the graph between concentration versus x x is the distance from the electrode surface you are not have you don't have to be able to draw the concentration profile but at least you should be able to read it all right so again amperometry apply the constant potential so e versus t is constant and the chrono amperogram is indicates the falls of the current over time all right so let's explain this shape if we draw the concentration profile we can draw something like this as well so this is the this is this is your electrode so this is your electrode and x is the distance from the electrode let's assume that we're going to do the oxidation right now so we have r right the radio species and we're going to apply the potential to be higher than the form of potential so that r can be oxidized to o and we get the anodic current from the oxidation of R. Initially, initially at time zero, we, don't, we didn't apply anything, right? So the intensity of the color here indicates the amount of R, the concentration of R. Since at the beginning, we didn't do anything. So the concentration of R is the same over the whole bulk solution in the beaker, the R is the same. So we have no current. So here we indicate bulk concentration. And we can draw the concentration profile like this. Again, you don't have to be able to draw, but this is just to visualize the process. At time zero, you don't do anything. So the concentration is the same as the initial. Now, we apply the positive potential. Here we see apply the pot positive potential. If we apply positive enough or like the potential higher than the formal or standard potential then your sp the species at the electrode which is around here is oxidized right something uh, uh, around here is oxidized so if you apply in uh, enough positively uh, then your r here is oxidized so you don't so now you don't have r anymore you don't have R anymore at the electrode surface. You get two things. First, from oxidation, you get the anodic current. Second, since we use up all the R at the electrode surface, now you generate the gradient of concentration between the, the electrode surface and the bulk solution. You can see that now at the electrode surface, you don't have any R but in the bulk concentration, you have higher concentration of R, which means that R from the bulk solution kind of diffuses to the electrode surface. All right? If we uh, apply enough positive potential to oxidize R, then we uh, generate the concentration gradient, and then R from the bulk, bulk solution will diffuse to the electrode surface. At this point, we can draw the concentration profile like this. Yeah, as T1. So R from the bulk solution have to diffuse to the electrode surface, which means that now 
at the time t2 maybe the time after that you're gonna use up more r here right you use more more r near the electrode surface and you draw the concentration profile like this you can see now that the slope is decreased the slope of the concentration profile is decreased and you use up more uh, here yeah from here to here you use more uh, and then when the time passed again you use more r uh, so you're gonna have to diffuse the r uh, from the bulk solution to the electrode surface all right what does it mean by that it means that now you have you uh, from T1 to T2 and T3, you need more time. You need more time to diffuse the R from the bulk solution to the electrode surface, right? Because it is further. It, it, it is further from the electrode surface. Your distance is larger than when the time beginning. At the time T1, you need only this distance to diffuse R from bulk solution to electrode surface. But at T2, you need more distance. At T3, you need larger distance or further distance it means that you have a slower diffusion over time right you, you have slower diffusion over time slower diffusion over time causes the current to be decay right because this may be time one time one the t1 you get higher current t2 you get smaller current because diffusion diffusion is lower and and it's uh, here decrease and decrease. So at the end, this is why you get the chrono amperogram, something like this. I decays over time. All right. Any question? We apply enough positive potentials so, so uh, the R at the surface is oxidized, but it is depleted. It is all used up. So you have to diffuse R further from the electrode. But when the time passes, you need to diffuse R from further and further from the electrode surface. That causes the diffusion to be slower. And that's why you get a sm smaller current because, again, the current reflects the, the rate of electrode reaction. If you get smaller, uh, slower diffusion, then your electrode, surface, electrode, re uh, electrode reaction rate is smaller as well. So your current is decreasing so this is the chrono amperogram let's do the example 3.5 what will happen to the chrono amperogram of r oxidation if a b and c okay if a the solution is stir what's gonna happen so let's draw the original chrono amperogram So let's say this is original chrono and program. You get I over here. What's going to happen if the solution is stirred? So uh, if you stir the solution, then it will increase the rate of the mass transfer, right? Because you can imagine uh, if you put some sugar or some uh, syrup in the water and let it diffuse, it takes all. It takes the very large amount of time to make the homogeneous solution. But if you stir it, yeah, it's gonna take a couple seconds, and that's it. So by convection or by uh, stirring, you increase, you enhance the rate of mass transfer. Mass transfer. So you enhance the rate of redox reaction. So your current increased but it doesn't i didn't mean that it in, increased over time so what does it mean by decrease so this is this is normal only diffusion right so if you stir it you cause the convection so you may get something like this you may get something like this this is diffusion plus convection So let's do B then. If there is no R in solution, nothing to be oxidized, what's going to happen? So no R means, so you don't get anything, right? You don't, you don't, you don't generate Faraday current. But you, have, you still have something called charging current. 
So I will draw something like this. So your Faraday current will be just flat, zero. But you may get some charging current. I can draw the charging current, but you don't you don't have to know the form of the form of charging current, but it is exponentially here. Yeah, but but you don't need to know this. But what do you need to know is that there's no Faraday current, so your Faraday current is flat. But you if you're gonna get the charging current from the electrical double layer, electrical double layer. What about C? If your beaker have R, but you apply the potential lower than its formal potential, what's gonna happen? So if E is lower than formal potential, it basically means that you don't have any oxidation as well. So it's gonna be the same as B. You don't, yeah, you don't generate any oxidation of R, so you don't have Faraday current, so you get only charging current. So actually, the mathematical form, and if you have to, if you use it, I'm gonna give you it in the if, give you in the exam if you have to use it. The mathematical form of the Faraday current from amperometry can be predicted from mathematics and. This is the equation for that. We call this equation Cottrell equation, which is I is equal to NFA square root DC over square root pi T. Okay, so let's uh, consider each term. I is the Faraday current, N is the number of electron transfer, like the, the electron in the half reaction. F, uh, F is the Faraday's constant, A is the electrode surface area. D is the diffusion coefficient, C is the concentration, pi is pi, T is time. You do, but you don't need to like know, know to calculate this. But what we want to show you is uh, two things here, maybe several things, two or three things. The first thing is that I decrease over time, right? I decrease over time because I now is uh, inversely proportional to the square root of the time. So this predicts the shape of the coronal amperogram. I is proportional to one over square root t. You can see it from the equation here. The second point is that uh, I or current is proportional to the concentration, right? Because I is proportional to C. This is important for the analytical chemistry uh, analysis. I is proportional to C, which is the concentration of the electroactive species. And the third point that I want to make is that I is proportional to electrode surface area or A. I is proportional to electrode surface area. So it means that if you use higher concentration of species, then you will get higher current. And if you use larger electrode surface, you will get larger Faraday current. So that's uh, that uh, what the Cottrell equation explains, all right? So how 